Hey guys, Blazin here. Today, in this video, I'm going to talk about Callisto Protocol. Now I know I'm pretty late to talking about this game, but I've recently gone back to playing it and decided to give this game another try. By the way, I'm not in that group where people were saying this game was ass or just plain bad. I actually quite enjoy this game, even when I first played it. Now I played this game on PS5, and when it first came out, uh, I did crash a few times, but overall I was able to still play through the game. I know PC players had a very hard time playing this game when it first came out due to technical difficulties. So I've decided to wait for February 7th for the Outer Way Skin Collection update which included hardcore mode and some cosmetics. New Game Plus was also included as well. As of making this video, this game has gotten quite a few glitch fixes and updates and I didn't crash on my second playthrough on PS5 so that's nice. So I guess the first thing I'll get out of the way is the game's story. Not going to get too much into it, as you guys should play the game yourselves, but basically, the plot is about a normal guy named Jacob, the main character you play as. His job is basically a space truck delivery driver. He was tasked to deliver special cargo to certain places. One of those places being Black Iron Prison, which is the place where you get stuck at. Shit goes wrong, and you have to escape the prison. That's the basic plot, but of course I'm being very vague on purpose, and keeping it simple for you to understand. The story isn't amazing, nor terrible in my opinion. Just serviceable enough, I would say. The next thing I'll talk about is the level design. Now this game is pretty linear, and there is some stuff to search for in the environment, such as lockers, items behind glass, and chests. There are branching paths, but they're not really, or like, not necessarily anything too deep or exciting. Sometimes you'll, you will find, like, extra materials or just stuff that's gonna help you out or some lore. Nothing too special. Graphically, this game is very pleasing to the eye, along with smooth animations and facial expressions on characters. Elias, are you sure this is the right one? Get me out of here! What are you doing here? What the hell is going on? Did you know it was her? Is this who we're looking for? Yeah, well... No, I just knew it was someone who could help us. Why? why would I help you? Uh, I can explain. While most of the game's levels are industrial, there are other areas in the game, such as the sewers. <laughs> and out in the snow. Something kind of annoying about the levels is that you're going to be crawling through around tight spaces a lot. Like, it didn't bother me too much, but it was something I noticed to the point where I have to mention it. Poor bastard. Now, let's talk about the gameplay. You can still dismember enemies known as biophages, which I'll get into them in a minute, much like Dead Space. Your guns can dismember them, making fights easier with your stun baton. Which your stun baton is going to be your best friend throughout the entire game. From there I'll talk about the dodge mechanic, because you're going to be dodging a lot. Dodging is very simple, just move left or right whichever way you want. No timing is required. Only thing you need to keep in mind is not to dodge in the same direction twice in a row. You can block as well, but it's not recommended because you take chip damage unless you upgrade your stun baton, which I will quickly mention, there is a store slash upgrade system, and I like the way it looks. Not much to say about it, the upgrade station does the typical shit you expect. Only thing I'll mention is, much like Dead Space, there are schematics hidden throughout the levels, so make sure you hold on to those in your inventory until you reach the nearest upgrade station so you can buy new guns. Another similar Dead Space mechanic is your Kinesis, or in this game, it's called Grip. However, the grip can't pick up items for you, like Kinesis, but, unlike Kinesis, you can pick up live enemies and launch them against environmental hazards. Another similarity to Dead Space is the absolute brutal death animations that can happen to Jacob. This game does not hold back on the gore. Now, let's talk about the enemies, which really aren't that varied from a gameplay perspective. Most of what you're going to fight are humanoid ugly bastards. There's this guy that spits at you, but once you shoot off his head, he behaves like all the other guys. 
There are these four-legged things that crawl on walls and ceilings, but you kind of deal with them the same way when you fight them. The normal guys, and even the spitters, will eventually mutate later in the game. And they'll mutate mid-fight, which I think is a very cool idea, but once again, you fight them the same way like everyone else. So now you're starting to see why I said the enemies aren't that varied. There isn't really different ways or like just, yeah, like different ways to fight them. Player expression is kind of limited in this game. You fight all the biophages the same way, pretty much. There are blind enemies in this game, but that's, all, that's their only unique trait. Once again, when you get spotted by them, they behave the same way like everyone else, so they're not really that scary. By the way, those blind mofos have their own stealth sections, and in my opinion, those are the weakest areas in the game. I just want to go and kick wrinkly ass, alright? If the blind biophages were much more scarier, or like had like scarier gameplay mechanics, or something like Gears of War's Berserker, then I'd probably like the stealth sections a lot more, but as of right now, they, they just slow down the pace of the game too much. The gameplay you see in the background is what you're going to be doing most of the time. I guess the next couple enemies I'll talk about are the bosses, which there are only two of them in this game, and one of them is used like four times. What is it? That stench. I've smelled it before. And the other is the final boss, which I won't show. The bosses aren't that very fun to fight either, and I'll leave them at that. Another thing I don't like about this game is how spongy the enemies can be, even on normal. I also don't like when facing against groups of biophages, you only fight one at a time. So the group fight looks like, like, it just looks artificial and the tension is kind of gone, or it, it lessens. Now before any updates to the game, uh, the game wasn't like that. Before, the enemies in groups did try to attack you if you focused on one guy for too long. I almost kind of preferred that. A bit controversial, I know, but at least it gave me a challenge. One-on-one -on -one fights in this game are not hard. It's fighting multiple guys at once is the difficult part, in groups. Now the one positive thing I'll say that Striking Distance did is that since only one guy attacks you, they no longer attack you from behind or at least nowhere near as often. They will grab you and make sure you're in their line of sight before they attack. The alternative solution I wish Striking Distance did instead is put an in-game field of view slider. That way we can increase our field of view and we can have a better view on the group of biophages and better anticipate incoming attacks when it comes to group fights, but too late for that I guess. Maybe someday I'll give the game a third try because I actually haven't tried New Game Plus yet. I just played the game once, and what you're seeing in the background is Hardcore Mode, which I'll give my quick thoughts on that next. Hardcore Mode at first wasn't hard at all. It felt too easy at first, to the point where I had to check in the menus to make sure I was on Hardcore Mode. So it seems like the first half of the game, or the first quarter, will kind of not be difficult until you reach the later half, which by then the difficulty will be running at its full capacity. Biggest things you'll notice as you progress through Hardcore Mode is the high amount of damage you take, the low amount of health you gain, and the low amount of ammo you'll find. Oh, and enemies with tentacles will mutate a lot faster. And I think that's all I gotta say on Callisto Protocol. Overall, despite some of my gripes with it, I still had fun. I guess you might have noticed I didn't make any or like too many comparisons to Dead Space. It's got a few things obviously, but I feel maybe they misadvertised this game and kept mentioning Dead Space too much, and it could have fucked people's expectations. Because really this game is kind of its own thing, with only a few Dead Space references. Also, can't forget that this was first advertised as a PUBG universe. I don't know what the fuck was that about. If you choose to play this game, just keep in mind you're going to be doing a lot of whacking and dodging, and occasionally shooting. But mostly dodging and whacking. I hope there is a sequel to this game. I know financially it didn't do good, but I do want to see a sequel as there is definitely room for improvement. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and share this video with your friends. Links are down in the description, subscribe if you want to stick around, and until next time, peace.